Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Bula Aloysius Navmani from University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And uh, myself, Bula, and Dr. Yue, Dr. Zhao, and Dr. Chow are um, co-authors of this paper. And um, this will be the outline of my presentation, the introduction, and the related work, um, and what is the actual migration security problem, and the experiment and ana analysis that we did, and the potential approaches uh, for, and the, for the be best practices and at the end with the discussion and conclusion. So our paper is an analysis of the virtual machine migration incurred security problems in the club. So basically, what are the security problems we encounter after the VM has been migrated from one physical machine to another physical machine? So um, as you all um, know that the cloud computing has been served like in three different services, software as service, platform as service and infrastructure as service. So um, the Amazon EC2, that's our experimental, experimental test bed um, with the IAAS, the infrastructure as a services. So uh, the infrastructure as service has on-demand self-service, elasticity and you know, uh, resource pooling and all the measured services. So, um, so the subsection of this cloud rapid elasticity is the VM migration. So we migrate the, they migrate the VM instances from one physical machine to another physical machine uh, for the resources or maintenance purpose. And here, if you look at this diagram of the picture, we have three physical machine and each has three different type of, uh, three instances, VM, VM1 or the virtual machine instance, uh, VM2 and VM3. So, um, if there is any, like, uh, the benefit of IAS, the elasticity, the VM from one physical machine will be moved to another physical machine, physical machine two or physical machine three, uh, to meet the demand of resources, or if there is any maintain, maintenance purpo purpose, or if there is any performance needed. So um, our paper is about, like, what are the security problems you will encounter if a VM instance is migrated from one physical machine to another physical machine um, because of the load balancing. So here are the benefits of the cloud. As we all know, like it's uh, cost efficiency, elasticity, scalability, and VM migration is load balancing, performance progress, and uh, fault management. And yeah, the, the related work. So far, the VM migration and its related work are uh, based on securing the VM migration channel, like from source, when a VM is migrated, when a virtual machine is migrated from one physical machine to another physical machine. Here, from one physical machine, the, if you see the dotted, line, uh, dotted lines, from one physical machine to another physical machine. So the related works are uh, depend on like how secure you can, uh, you can make this channel to migrate from the source, which is the physical machine one, to the physical machine three. So our, um, so these, uh, they have some, they proposed, many authors have proposed trusted platform for that migration, and how you can secure the destination. So is the destination is trustworthy to move the VM instance from the source to destination? And uh, some of the authors have, uh, implemented secure migration protocol, which will take care of this uh, progress of the VM instance one to, uh, from source to destination. So here, uh, what the, the security issue that we propose in the presentation in our paper is, if we take a VM instance in a cloud, so the cloud service provi provider itself provides some type of security to our uh, instance, but that's not enough. We have to provide security in depth like defense in depth. So you can provide like inst uh, intrusion detection or intrusion prevention system. So here IDS or IPS, simple as like IP tables or SNORT, like you all know. So here what happened when a VM instance migrated from one physical machine to another physical machine, like source machine to the destination machine, the, trans the identifiers after migration will be changed. Like the IP table, um, IP address, host name, uh, public DNS and the MAC address because we typically move from a physical machine to another physical machine, right? 
but the security, the identifiers we use in the security rules, like the IP table rules or the SNOT rules will not change, which will weak or even, you know, zero the security protection or defense in most of the cases. So this, uh, the main aim or the main um, focus of this paper is like, due to this mutation of uh, uh, new identifiers after migration, we have the identifiers unaltered in the security uh, rules and which became null. So here our um, experiment bed is yeah, Amazon EC2 service and we, uh, yeah, we use EC2 Classic where we created two instances and ESA instance A and instance B. So these are the AMI image, uh, Amazon image instances provided by Amazon and uh, we install like two host level uh, security defense. One is the IDS and the IPS. Intrusion detection is the, um, the SNORT and the IP tables, the net filter IP tables. And um, the, when we launch, when an instance is launched in a public EC2 cloud, we have um, the EC2 will assign us a public IP, public domain name, private IP and the private domain name. So they provide another option of elastic IP, which is a um, static IP, which is associated to, to your account, which, and not associated to your EC2 uh, in a VM, virtual machine instance. So you can use that uh, static IP for any association, uh, for any instance. Actually, you have to associate that IP to your instance. But what happens after, like, you know, migration, there may be a, a wide chance that uh, it will go, dis, you know, disassociate, so we have to come back and associate. So this is a, a general view of the EC2 instance. The instance has a security group, which is provided by the cloud service provider itself, and uh, they, they are attached to the Amazon um, EBS, and we have an option to um, launch our instance in an availability zone. You can choose your own zone. Uh, and um, a private key is provided when we launch an instance so that we can communicate from our desktop to the uh, cloud. And the next one will be, the, this is the EC2 instance lifecycle. So when you launch an AMI instance, so it will become, a, it will be in the pending state and then it will, you know, uh, start running. So when you stop the instance, that's how we might, you know, forcefully migrated the instance. When you stop the instance, it will go to the stop state, and then when you start back, it will again come back as a beginning, like depending on the running state, where you will be assigned with a new IP or the new DNS and the new MAC address, where, you know, um, the instance was migrated from uh, one physical machine to another physical machine. So from the running to terminate, that means you delete your, the instance completely. So shut down, it will shut down your instance and then it terminate. So uh, the intrusion uh, prevention system, which is the IP tables. So we have a firewall, the uh, IP table uh, firewall in between the instance and the outside communication wall, the intern uh, internet. So the uh, security rules, the IDS and IPS can be written based on um, anomaly or the signature-based rules so that we could ask, um, force to reject the authorized and uh, unauthorized traffic and allow, um, allow accept the authorized traffic. So here completely it will prevent. So it, it will allow only the authorized traffic. So. Um, so we have implement, we implemented like sample rules to see like how it behaved before migration and we forcefully d did that migration, like move the instance from one physical machine to the another and then how uh, different it, uh, you know, it uh, behaved. So here, this is a sample rule. We, fi uh, we have a table of uh, sample rules and this, from that table, we picked like one scenario to explain you. And we are here, the default policy in the IP table is allow. And uh, the, scenario, the scenario here is like the ICMP request. So we, we wanted to completely uh, say the other instance is an unauthorized and only instance B is authorized to communicate with instance A. So here, so as per the rule before migration, so if there is any traffic coming from the other instance, it will be rejected. And if there is any, instant, uh, any traffic uh, 
coming from instance B, it will be uh, considered as a authorized traffic and it will, um, there will be communication between A and B. But what happens after we migrate? The IP address of the instance A changed. The IP address of the instance A changed. So, uh, so here, the rule will not be effective anymore and then uh, it start letting the unauthorized tra traffic to the instance B, which is actually zero the defense protection in instance A. So here, case two, what happens if the instance B IP address changed? So here, initially, it will allow the instance B to instance A. So after the IP address change, it will completely reject the uh, legal communication between the instance, uh, which is a legitimate communication between instance A and instance B. So, um, so if for the first case, um, you know, uh, we are actually letting the unauthorized ICMP request. And this is the sample table uh, we have uh, implemented like, uh, like many rules, and this is the few rules. And here, this is the intrusion detection system where it will alert the suspicious activity, but it will not completely reject or drop. So here is a sample scenario. Uh, what happens, we pick the TCP rule with the FTP request, and it will allow only from the instance B. So it will alert if there is any uh, communication from unauthorized instance. But if there is any change in the instance A, then you know, there, there won't be any alert to the admins. So uh, case B, case two, so it, there will, the uh, communication between A and B is legitimate. So there won't be any alert. But if the instance B IP address changed, then the alert, the, there will be false alarm between these two communication. So, um, so I had a few rules. So here, uh, what is the essential problem? Like after, when we move, the identifiers we use in the security rules in the new environment is like new, it's changed, but the identifiers we used in the security rules is not changed, which uh, zero the defense that we provided. So what are the best practices? We can um, adopt using the dynamic uh, environment variables, like uh, you know Linux text utili utilities like, uh, like set and grep, where you can just um, uh, grep the IP address or the dynamic IP address from the IF uh, config file and do the pattern matching and extraction and use it instead of the um, unchanged identifier. So here, uh, you know, uh, some of the advanced facilities are provided by the cloud service provided, uh, provider. The Amazon has a virtual private cloud, which you can launch your instance into your own subnet. And the, the Elastic IP, which I explained um, in your previous slides, will, will uh, work very good with the VPC, with the subnet type of uh, the environment. But the other one would be the auto detection and correction. And this will be for the instances which we already applied and we have the security rules. Um, and you can identify, we can write a tool to identify all the hard coded security rules and detect the transformation, uh, transformed identifiers in your new environment and update, in, uh, update that in your security policy and the rules. So, uh, so here, this is uh, the, the rules, the IDS and the IPS I explained is on the system level, but we do have problems on the application uh, layer services as well. So we, uh, like, we use the identifiers as IP address, host name, and um, domain name, and MAC address for the web services. For example, uh, Apache web server, uh, is the HTTPD config is a plain uh, file with the directives in it. For example, if you have the direct, uh, directive directory, that is the access control to this directory is based on the IP address or, or the host name. So consider after migration what happens, you completely block the access to that specific directory. So this similar can apply to the Apache virtual host where you uh, host like, you know, uh, many uh, web pages and uh, are many uh, web pages in one server. So based on the IP address and host names, the web pages are uh, displayed, but if this one, this IP address and host name changed after migration, there won't be any access to that web page. Um, the conclusion, so in our paper we have explained what is the actual scenario uh, uh, and what is the root cause of uh, that 
could weaken the VM instance security and even nullify the security uh, after migration. And we explained those scenarios in a test bit of Amazon EC2 with intrusion prevention and intrusion detection system, which is net filter, IP tables, and SNART. Oh, thank you.